Hey everyone, it's Lauren here and I'm excited to be back to share with you a process video of what ended up being one of the prettiest layouts I think I've ever made. It is part of the Scrappy YouTubers Liftathon, and I was this Liftathon has been going on for a long time. There are so many wonderful Scrappy YouTubers that wanted to be a part of this hop. It's been going on for over a month. Now, a list of everyone involved is in the comments below, and I want you to go in if you are a scrapbooker and you are looking for new channels, new inspiration, then we have a whole list for you in this um, in this liftathon that we're doing. Now I was challenged to scrap lift a wonderful scrapbooker by the name of Mari Hurst and her link to her YouTube channel is below and she's also over on Instagram, which is a really nice place to be because you get a real snapshot of a scrappy artist. And her Instagram handle is Pear Tree Paper Crafts. So I want you to go and check her out because the one thing about her beautiful style is that she is has lots of traditional elements in her scrapbooking, but she's also dabbling in a bit of mixed media and she really loves cut files. So if that sounds like someone like you, then I suggest you pop over, subscribe to her channel and um, check out her Instagram because there is oodles of inspiration there. So I, you, you saw the layout that I was going, I have inspired me to create um, back in the beginning. So if you wanted to check that out again, just scroll back to the beginning of this video and pause it and have a little look. But she really inspired me to incorporate a cut file, use some mixed media and sort of have a, a trickling effect of embellishments um, throughout the center of, well, you know, throughout the main cluster of your layout. So I pulled out some of my Lindy Stamp Gang Magical Powders, a lovely little colour combo here, and as you see, they really blend well. I was a little bit impatient. Usually what I do is I dry off between my layers so that my colours sit on top of each other, but I was a bit impatient and I was just sort of putting it on everywhere and it sort of all blended in together, which is a lovely effect, but it really does... Um, You've got to be very careful with your colours, not to be make a big brown mess by blending the way that I'm doing at the moment. And you can see I'm dabbing off because I don't want my pools to, to blend too much. I, I just want them to sort of sit nicely, highlight their individual colour, but also transition well together. So that's why I've just got a tissue there and I'm just dabbing up the excess before they blend and make a brownie, yucky colour. Um, not that brown's a yucky colour, it just has its place and not on this layout. <laughs> so as you can see, I've made a pretty colourful background and I've got this photo here of the women, my family, my the women in my life. We went away and we hired an apartment and we just had a few nights together and it was just a really lovely, a lovely time. So I had to have a, a like highlight this group selfie moment where all these women are very special to me and are my support network during tricky times and they also get to highlight in the joys in my life as well as I do theirs. As you can see I've made two um, this is a 12 by 12 inch page I've wanted I'm scrapbooking in a 9 by 12 inch format at the moment so I've cut off that excess side there but you saw me putting some color on because I'm going to back the little butterfly cut file that you saw me playing with there earlier so that it um, coordinates well it's like I've made my own embellishment butterfly a one that is of its design for this collection, the Lauren Mixed Media Collection here. So you can make your custom cut file backgrounds like I've done when you're using mixed media, just by simply, whilst you're working on the main cluster, do a small cluster off to the side, then you can back your cut file in that and you know that it will coordinate perfectly. I am also thought I'd have a dabble with um, getting out my Big Shot and I've got this beautiful die and that's a Pink Fresh Studio doily die and I thought I'd just give it a go. Now this this Sizzix Big Shot and I, we are 
where it's a new relationship. I'm still working it out. And as you will see here, it's didn't work out too well but it worked out enough because I'm not featuring the entire doily I'm just poking it out of the edges so I only needed a section to work really really well so I don't know what I'm doing wrong here I don't know maybe you Sizzix professionals out there if you're watching can give me a tip on why that didn't cut through really well and why that I some areas didn't cut through at all as you can see there I've just got a pokey tool and I think that was I think from the cricket like a cricket set not that I have a cricket I have a silhouette but at spotlight they had these little pokey tools and they're on sale so I grabbed one and I'm thankful that I did for this very purpose because um, poking all those intricate little holes would have been a real pain in the bottom if I didn't have a pokey tool. So as you can see, I'm only just going to use those little edges there to um, sort of add a different texture, add a bit of dimension to the layout, but also help border the photo because what I don't want to do is I put my photo down on all that beautiful mixed media work and then it sort of get lost in, in the background. So, yeah, this is a little bit painful, but it's well worth it in the end. But, yeah, I'm, my Sizzix and I are going to have to have spend some time together, I think, to work, work all that out. But as you can see, that's just enough, and I'm going to pop that away to think about that another day and working out how that all went there. That's a gorgeous little doily die, and I think, as you can see, it's just made a little bit of an intricate detail there and it's really made my photo stand out by adding sort of an informal border. Now here I am back in that cup file. I'm just using one of my favourite wet glues which has a really thin tip on it. I'm dropping it and putting glue everywhere. And it also has that pretty diamante lid that you see there. And you know, who can't buy something with a diamante on the top really? <laughs> But just making sure that I'm putting the butterfly um, in an area where I'm getting, making sure I'm picking up a little bit of all the colours that I used in that background, which then brings my little butterfly to life a little bit and it just sort of makes it a little bit special and you can clearly see what I'm doing is really trying to make a custom embellishment that coordinates perfectly with my layout and as you can see there it is it will sit on the page it'll be a nice soft subtle little embellishment um, that's you know just highlights a little feature on the layout. Now um, Pink Fresh Studio also have brought out this gorgeous new collection. I don't have much of it. I only got a couple of little bits of it because I'm doing my crafty clean out this year and I'm trying very hard not to splurge on all the new collections out. So the way that I'm doing that is just picking up like a piece or a few pieces just not the entire collection which is my usual go-to I just get, have to have everything but I'm being very good and in this collection I think I only got like two pieces of paper and one this pack of floral embellishments which I knew would be so versatile and look and you can see you know it's sort of bringing this little mixed media page to life even though it those colors are really quite strong just those pops of deeper colours really sort of help that really contrasting black and white photo to um, sort of settle the page down and sort of make that page uh, an even, it's, it's sort of giving a bit of depth, but it's also just sort of evening out that, um, that black and white photo and just the page in its entirety and that's what I try and look for I don't want something one embellishment or one photo that's really stark and not sort of blending a little bit but we just got to work out that fine balance of coming up with different ways to um, keep the your page color balanced I hope that makes sense I don't think it made sense but I hope you get the gist of what I'm trying to do so a nice soft subtle way to um, border your photo um, and help it sort of stand out is using just some tissue paper to um, mount your photo and then you can sort of crinkle it around the edges to give it a bit of a border. I had some of those beautiful Lindy Stamp Gang magical powders left over so I thought I'm just going to custom colour my tissue paper and as you can see it turned into a big sloppy mess 
but with a little bit of a heat gun, it really crisped that up and it actually turned out really, really well. And I think that this is my first time custom coloring tissue paper. And to be honest, I didn't think it would work really well, but it gave a really soft, subtle water, watercolor effect bit of a tie-dye kind of washy effect and it really just you know tied it in together and it's only subtle but these these when you're putting layouts like this together it is about documenting the memory but it really is for me it's about the process as well and finding little crafty ways to um, make your layouts come to life is a real is a really uh, like a joy for me to do and it is that creative escape where I just get to um, you know let loose and there's no judgment here this is my scrapbooking for me it goes in my album that I will look at and treasure and delight in for years to come and the only person I need to please in this process is me and I please myself by doing but also recording these special memories that are mine and they what they what those memories actually mean to me um, and no one else so it is uh, a form of art journaling and and journaling in general that is um, therapeutically ticks the box for me and I know scrapbooking has many different meanings for many different people but for me it is really about that therapeutic process of putting something like this together delighting in that memory and you know taking some time to be grateful um, that I can have this beautiful hobby, I can have this, I've got this wonderful family and what that this photo means to me and why it's important for me to document it. So this gorgeous puffy stickers are from a new Simple Stories collection, I think it's called Cottage Fields and that once again I was really good, I only got, oh I might have got a little bit more of this collection. <laughs> I got those puffies and I got the one embellishment pack and I got I think about three of the pattern papers for this one but what I've discovered is that's really all you need like for me when I'm doing project life I'm documenting my these are my 2020 photos that I'm still on I usually do a main photo and then a couple of pocket pages and maybe another main like layout photo um, so one collection with a few bits of paper and maybe one embellishment pack and a title pack, well, you can easily do that and then you can move on to the next collection. So I think what I've learned in me kind of thinking about a crafty clean out is, you know, really when you're looking at collections, have a think about what it is are you going to use in those collections and don't be frightened to use things up like if you've got a sticker sheet mate and you see that extra spot where that extra little love heart could go or that extra butterfly put it down don't save it put it down scrap it there's going to be new collections coming and you don't want to be left with oodles and oodles of scrapbooking supplies that are beautiful because you're you're wanting to hoard them get them on your layouts use them to light in them and just love your layouts and put those extra butterflies, put those extra hearts. Look at me, I'm going crazy with enamel dots there. Those sweet enamel dots are from Coco Vanilla Studio More Than Words collection and the colour palette is beautiful, soft and pastels, perfect for this layout. So as you can see, my layouts pretty much come together and I am just finishing off, well trying to finish off with those last little bits and pieces and yeah, so remember, this is part of a massive YouTube hub. If you're wanting new YouTubers, scrappy YouTubers on your subscription list, check out the massive list below. Check out the beautiful Mari Heist and let her inspire you with her creative style. And I'll check back in with you guys later with another layout. Take care. Happy scrapping. Bye.